All right, guys, Mario Kart World Tour, or Mario Kart Tour, is out, and it's available. It dropped yesterday, um, <clears throat> and I have played it. <laughs> I have completed everything. The only thing I have left to do is kind of like challenges while I wait for the next cup to, uh, to come out. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But how is it? How does it work? How does it move? How does it function? What does it do? How does it play? We're going to talk about that. So Mario Kart Tour is a is a gotcha game. Yes, they made Mario Kart a gotcha game. Here, I'll show you here. Look at that. Pauline is here. Fire 10, 45 rubies. Yeah, you have to pull for new carts, new drivers, and new gliders. It's, it's a strange feeling to have this in Mario Kart. It really is. But... Well, we'll talk about that a little more as we go on. Um, how does the gameplay work? The gameplay um, is swiping left to right. You auto-drive, so it will automatically drive you um, forward. There is no reverse, uh, so it will auto-correct you if you crash into a wall and stuff like that. But um, if you want to use an item, you swipe up to throw forward, swipe down, throw it behind you, um, uh, swipe left or right to steer, or tap le or swipe left to drift to the right, swipe right to drift to the left. I'll show you real quick here. In the very first Mario Tour, Mario, the New York Minute T. We we'll use all the stuff I got. Now, when the way it also works too, when you're completing these cups, is you have to get a certain amount of points in order to get the, the gold star. You know, they're similar to the way they looked in Mario Sunshine. Uh, the stars allow you to move on to get to the next cups and to unlock prizes along the way. And depending on what you do it on, 50cc, 100cc, 150cc, it'll get you more bonus points and whatnot. So, here we go. Much like any other Mario Kart game, it works at 2. If you tap and hold, you'll start that. And let's go. Go. Alright. So, drifting is pretty much really easy. You get auto jump boost by going anything. Ow, you fucker. And by going over anything that gives you any form of a jump. Get out of the way, bitch. Oh, I could have gotten the super boost. That's okay. I don't even know what place I'm in because my little icon on the top is taking over. Quite frankly, I really don't care if I finish first or not. This is just kind of like showing you just how the game plays and everything. And, like, even though I'm doing it kind of easy, like, I'll, I'll, oh, I'll tell you what, like, it, the controls take a little bit to get used to. It, it's a little clunky. Uh, there are gyro controls, so if you do need them they are there i will tell you right now though it's very hard to control the gyro controls like they're very loose and they're not very it's not very tight um and what i mean by that if like you tilt your phone to the left you'll slowly start going to the left and you want to turn straight again you gotta wow i finished fifth what the fuck um anyway if you turn your phone back to straight it's going to take the, that same amount of slow time to get back to straight and everything <clears throat> After each race, you get a certain amount of experience points based off of the number of points that you get. Uh, that will level up your your riders, your whatever you use during that race, it'll level them up. Um, and then if you notice, here we'll do one where I have. So, for example, here you see a toad is the like the picture on there. If you use certain characters uh, to fit the race, you'll get um, more items every time that you grab. An item box so if i chose toad if you see up here i can get three items from the box and the chance for what's called frenzy where you get a star boost speed and unlimited use of that item for a certain time um and then two items and then if you have the certain car you get bonus points if you have the certain glider you'll get bonus combo points so on and so forth um then when you get up to the koopa trooper cup you enter like this little ranking system where you pretty much like duke it out with other people, try to get like a top score and everything. Uh, it only goes out of 20 people, so it matches you with a random 20 people. I'm not even entirely sure how this works, to be honest, because I've been sitting at 1470. No one, 
no one has changed their their rank like that at all. And so I'm not really too sure how it works or if people are doing it properly yet. But this is pretty much as far as we can go. Like I said, I have cleared out everything. When you get a certain number of stars, though, you can get boxes. That'll give you items and stuff that you can use to use during race use during races. Like the tickets that'll auto generate I, uh, item power ups for you, uh, tickets to level up your cars, your drivers, and everything, so on and so forth. So pretty simple, right? Um, pretty st standard and straightforward. But here is my issue. Yes, Mario Kart World Tour just came out. So it literally just came out yesterday. So there is going to be a lack of content and lack of ways to get Ruby so you can pull for new drivers and stuff. My issue is that that's not an issue. This right here is my issue. The gold pass. So if you get the gold pass $5, you'll have a month's worth of access to the to new content in these treasure boxes. So if you come back, you see those two off on the side that I have not claimed. I cannot get those because I do not have the gold pass. You're thinking to yourself, why is this a problem? It's a gotcha game. It's a free mobile game. They didn't have to get their money somehow, right? Well, give me one second. The thing is with that is this is going to be a multiplayer based game. It's going to be PvP style, and it's going to work, more than likely going to work with the same kind of point system that we have now in the PvE aspect for leaderboards and such. You know, how you do against certain players or rack up points, your positioning will give you more points and everything towards a leaderboard to rack you up so you can get uh, more ranking style. Pretty much just like how this is here. That is more than likely how it's going to work for a worldwide leaderboard when the PvP drops. So you mean to tell me that I have to spend $5 to catch up with these other players who are getting access to all this extra stuff that's coming in our free content. New cars, um, rubies, tickets that they can use in, in, uh, in there to get items as they play. Gold and all that. Hell, if you come all the way out here, you get new cars. You even start getting new drivers, such as Metal Mario, who is in the gotcha pools, you know, as they come out. And by getting with this one here, that right there, the New York set, for $20, you'll get access to tickets that actually decrease the amount of time that you have to wait for the next cop to drop when you catch up in the content, and gives you extra stars and rubies. Paying for rubies is fine. That, that, that part is fine. That, that is pretty much standard to any form of gacha game. What is not fine is the fact that a lot of these extra content that you could get through just pulling for rubies are now inside your supposed free gifts locked behind a paywall. Which then in turns anyone who's paying this extra money has these riders to get extra points gets extra uh, things to have an extra advantage over you in when the PvP drops. Or even in this rank system that they have going on here. It, it, it sets up an advantage for anyone who's pay, <laughs> paying to play the game. And even though I, have not, I haven't spent a dime yet, I don't plan to, and I'm sitting here pretty right like this, when this actually does get fully fleshed out and everything, people who are paying... You know, to get all this stuff, I mean, they're they're raking in on the rewards over free over the free players who can't catch up because, you know, there's not enough content or not enough rewards for the free to play players. The pay to play the pay to play is taking much higher precedent. It's similar, sort of similar to the reason why people had a big tip with that um with um the Battlefront and Star Wars Battlefront games where people could pay certain money to unlock heroes early or get gear early and things like that. That's pretty much what this is. That's pretty much what's going on here. Like you you have if you pay the $5, you you can just get Metal Mario for free. A character whose synergy 
for a lot of this stuff to get extra points. And uh, for a character with a rider skill, this is actually very good. Um, it may uh, pretty much it makes him it gives him an extra speed boost. It makes him immune to attacks, from my knowledge anyway. Um, so getting access to a character by that you can only, that you should only be able to get through pulling, in fairness with everyone, you you could get him basically for free, or you can basically get him just by paying your paying your way in five dollars, and then on top of that, paying for the tickets to unlock these extra courts choruses before everyone else. It's not a healthy practice. It's not, and yes, we're gonna get the argument. Well, it's a free game. You know, they got to make their money somehow. That's that, that that's understandable. That's fine. There are plenty of other mobile games or any other gacha games out there who are doing just that, but doing it in a healthy me- manner. Like if you if it for games that have no PV, PvP aspect, it doesn't matter. Something like Dokken Battle, you could sit there and drop all this money just to get characters for your benefit. It's your choice to benefit your gameplay. You're not affecting anyone else. Something like Dragon Ball Legends. Yes, there is there is the pay-to-play aspect where people, you know, purchase a bunch so they can get stronger forms of the characters, but at least in Dragon Ball Legends, you can actually beat out those people with the stronger characters just by the way that you play, and there's plenty of options and plenty of means to actually get, you know, free-to-play characters and uh, free to play gems to keep up with these uh, keep up with those uh, play- players who want to pay their way. Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelings is another example. It's pretty much the same thing with Dragon Ball Legends. You can they entice you to try and buy you know sales here and there, like a dollar to get like three packs and a free SR and things like that. But there's plenty of missions. There's plenty of gems. There's plenty of packs. There's plenty of cards that you can get through the free-to-play lifestyle to actually benefit you so you can actually keep up. Will you be just a tad a tad slower? Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelings, for example, a tad slower because you'll have to work a little harder? Sure, but you could still do it. In this case here, there's no being a tad slower. People are literally buying their way to get through these passes here much faster than everyone else and getting more content that's locked behind a paywall that everyone should have access to but does not so mario kart tour while i think it's a fun game i think the driving needs to be tweaked upon because it is a little annoying to have to either one do drift with gyro controls or do steering with no drift at all um and while the game plays a lot of fun, you know, I, I am ha- I am enjoying myself with this. You know, I, I would be, if I wasn't, I wouldn't be all the way up to the Daisy Cup by now, just in the event that the game came out a day ago. Um, but it's supporting a lot of unhealthy practices at the moment, and I do have hopes that it changes a little bit in the future. We do need more ways of getting rubies as free-to-play players. We do need more ways of unlocking these things, you know, so we don't have to pay our way through the game in order to keep up with everyone else who is. That for something like this that's a no-go, like you you do need to have the opportunity to keep up with the people who are paying. Because it is their choice to pay. It is your choice to pay. And that that's all fine and dandy, but don't make it a choice that detriments other players, you know, detriments another player's progression. When all you have to do is toss out $5, $5, $20, and you can continue to move on with the game while everyone's stuck, you know, waiting, waiting around. That's poor, that's, that's a poor, mar- that's poor mentality. So, I have hope that things can change for the future. I have hope that we get more stuff. You know, the game did just come out, so that's why I'm saying right now I have hope. I'm not saying that all oh, the game is trash, you know, you don't, don't support it. You know, you can still download it, you can have fun, because at the moment, there is no PvP system. You can just go in, you can ride around, you can have a blast, and things like that. You might find yourself slowing down, because you can't clear certain score requirements. I've been lucky, I've been able to clear the score requirements, uh, because I did get lucky on my multi, my wife not so much. But, you can still ride around and have some fun playing the game, as it is currently. But, we let's just hope things change when the PvP does drop, and we get to race other players in a more fair more fair setting than what is being shown to us right now. 
So that'll do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let's hope Mario World Tour, Mario Kart World Tour improves for the future and implements a PvP system that we can all enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next one.